Welcome everyone to today's um, Block Rockets monthly startup pitches. My name is Jan from Disrupt, um, and today we're going to have five interesting startups pitch before a jury of, of three. And at the end, there's going to be a little voting session where also you can give feedback on who you think is the better investment case. Good morning, everyone. Also from my side, uh, my name is Benjamin. Um, yeah, so just as Jan already noted, uh, five startups today, uh, pitching five minutes each, five minutes Q&A after. As the audience, you can vote at the very end, which startup you found most interesting. Um, try to especially look at it from an investment perspective, as most startups that are pitching today um, also look for fundraising or an active fundraising um, stage. Uh, we have those, months, uh, those events on a monthly basis. So this is our monthly pitch event for July. Um, maybe uh, just a few quick words about us for two minutes, what we do with BlockRocket, then I will hand over to the jury to introduce themselves, and then we will start right away with the first pitch for today. Cool. Then, yeah, just two minutes about BlockRocket. So, um, so I'm the managing director of BlockRocket. We are an accelerator program for early stage blockchain startups um, that are active in the German ecosystem. Um, so we have different services, a variety of perks um, for startups to work with. So we invest directly into early stage startups with up to 100,000 euros per ticket. Um, we have matchmaking and marketing services. So the event today is a good example. So if you're a startup uh, that's part of our accelerator program, you're actively looking for fundraising, then we have um, regular events, workshops, etc., that we can offer you access to. Uh, we also help with uh, mentorship and advisory services, depending a bit on your stage and use cases. So again, our focus is mostly early stage startups. Um, that's where we, I think we can contribute the highest value. Um, our program is quite young. So we started uh, roughly like one and a half years ago, um, but we picked up traction in the German ecosystem um, really, really fast. So we received more than 150 startup applications so far. So again, this is mostly early stage blockchain startups within the German ecosystem or startups that come from abroad that want to enter the German ecosystem because they are expanding. Um, we have more than 30 CVs, uh, VCs in our network. Um, we plan the first five to 10 um, seat tickets ourselves this year. Uh, we have more than 200 partner organizations that are part of our network um, in Germany. Uh, we have had more than 40 startups that joined different stages of our program and we active I mean, now it's Corona. Before Corona, we were active in <laughs> more than three cities. Now everything is online, but still very well connected um, alongside or within Germany as a whole. Um, just, this is just uh, to give you an impression of our partner network. So within the blockchain ecosystem in Germany, um, it's, 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 it's quite diverse. So ranging from infrastructures to uh, media, um, tech providers, um, legal, legal firms, banks, investors, etc. Um, startups can enter our program in different stages. So this gives us quite a lot of flexibility of how we can support startups. So um, we invest some of the startups, but we don't necessarily have to invest. So you can still join our program if you're not in the fundraising stage, but if you're um, looking for access um, to more events, or if you would like, to, would like us to support you with networking or matchmaking in general. And uh, yeah, so that's just a quick intro about us. So if you're a startup, early stage, blockchain focused, German ecosystem, and you're interested in our program, then feel free to apply or reach out to me or my team anytime if you have any questions. So that's it from my side. Then I would say I hand over to uh, the jury we have today to introduce themselves. Um, I would say first is uh, Sven Wagenpech from BTC Echo. Good morning, Sven. Maybe a um, few words about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Benjamin. So my name is Sven and I'm co-founder and editor-in-chief at BTC Echo. We are the largest German-speaking media platform in terms of blockchain and cryptocurrency since 2014. And yeah, we are based in Berlin with our editorial team and our headquarters in Kleve, near Düsseldorf. And yeah, now I'm looking forward to exciting pitches where we, we will also gladly to feature the winner in our online magazine. Perfect. Thank you, Sven. Then second jury member for today is Lukas Etter from CVVC. Hey, good morning. Um, so um, I'm co-head of investments at CVVC. We are based here in Zug, Switzerland. So right in the heart of the so-called crypto valley. Um, we have um, two pillars of the business model. We have one ecosystem business model where we have a quite a big co-working space, both in Liechtenstein and in Zug. And we also run events, etc., uh, and bring together the community. And then we have the investment side, 
where we uh, invest in pre-seed stage uh, through an incubation program, um, and which is located in Zug and now moving virtual. And we invest selectively in series seed and series A, all with a block uh, focus on, on blockchain uh, technology startups. Perfect, thank you, Lucas. And lastly, we have um, David Vachev from uh, R3, Corda R3 here today. Hi, morning, everybody. So R3 is an enterprise blockchain firm. So we lead the largest blockchain ecosystem with 350 members. Now I'm leading the EMEA efforts for venture development team. So that's the gateway into that ecosystem for the early stage blockchain startups. We support all these early stage blockchain startups that are building applications on our blockchain platform Corda to validate their idea, get production ready and accelerate their go-to-market strategy. So looking forward to some pitches and exciting new startups today. Awesome, thank you, David. Perfect, and I would say we start right away with the first startup pitch for today, which is um, Holger from IP Ocean. Hi, thank you, Benjamin, and hello, everybody. So I want to introduce IP Ocean to you. My name is Holger Geisler, and if you're interested uh, or have questions, roll in the chat. And I simply want to uh, start this. We all know these great benefit of the internet. So we know that the internet is really fast. It has its unlimited connectivity and also this power. You're seeing that with Zoom here, but we are missing a couple of things. We feel really uneasy if we start sharing our valuable important information. And that's what we solve with IP Ocean. We help you to connect with other ecosystems to find the right partners, supporters, clients, and as investors in order really to start your collaboration innovation immediately. And that's we are adding to the internet, ownership protection, confidentiality, on-demand groups, and verifiability. And um, Holger, sorry, yes. sorry to interrupt. Um, do you want to uh, share your slides? They are shared, hold on. Because I can only oh, see you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Let me start sharing the slides. Perfect, now it works. And, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> And, and why is that important? Uh, because in the end, we want to start collaboration innovation immediately. And <clears throat> hold on, here we go. And collaboration innovation is important because companies need it, organizations need it really to succeed and to survive. You see a lot of winners, the top 50 innovators were just published yesterday. And, but you also see the companies who failed because the world, is, the world is getting more and more complex each day and we are facing at the same point in time a world with limited talents, limited resources, as well as limited time. Very prominent members here, Blackberry, they failed because they simply have not innovated. And, and um, what is the problem with collaboration and innovation? It's complex, it's costly and it's slow um, because it's very complicated. And there's an easy way to do it via the internet, but why are not nobody's doing it? Because it's pretty simple. You can't really protect your ownership if you start sharing your ideas. Um, it's pretty hard to really have confidential and, and trusted uh, communication. And on top of that, you do not, you have the reach, but you don't want, only want to reach out to the top talents and talk experts. And they only talk to you if you ensure before you are, have a trusted communication. And that's what we solve with IP Ocean. My screen is not working this way. And we simply build a trust network <laughs> and we connect people with the ecosystem. So the people coming here on the platform and they're clearing really upfront these sort of like ownership protection, confidentiality, on-demand groups, and as well as verifiability. And it's pretty simple. You can immediately start, you can register and start. It's a freemium model. And we really have in the background all the measures in place because it's a blockchain based internet platform. And it's pretty simple. You're logging in at the beginning, like you're logging into a bank account. You create your action, you can leverage all your networks and everything, the steps are recorded on the blockchain. You can really verify if we exchange information, we can really verify everything is there, but nobody else can do that. And we have in the background, an optional virtual legal process that really ensures confidentiality or sharing terms and conditions while you're doing all your actions. You look at the market, top down, bottom up, it's really huge. And the market is over, total address market over 100 billion. 
It has over 100 million of serviceable or payable market. And the nice thing is there are limited competition in there. The competitors do not have an optional virtual legal process. They do not have a platform. They do not have on-demand grouping. And that's what we have. And it was only developed because we had for the development a lot of partners. They signed that of intent. It's more than 16 already. And that's also our marketing approach. We are now talking to them, starting their first open innovation action here on our platform. And the initial pilots are now kicked off. We are also in discussion with an initial white label use of our platform in the area of deal making. And that's also the, the marketing strategy. We really run open innovation pilots with other clients. This way we create a demand pull and other people come onto the platform. And here we are transitioning these freemium uh, subscriptions into paying users. Um, if you're interested in the pricing model, it's ipocean.com slash pricing. There you see really what the pricing structure is. We are currently um, uh, launched the next step of the minimal viable product. And we developed everything over the last 18 months. This was only possible because we have a very strong and complementary team. Uh, Emil is our blockchain guru. Holger Banks is really a huge network in the life science area, which is our key focus area in the beginning when we are now starting launching the platform. I make sure that we really deliver on our targets and we have delivered over the last 18 months. We're currently looking for 500K up to a million to really get some momentum into the sales because we are seeing a lot of people are coming back now. We have to train them. Um, and on top of that, we want to build the next level of the minimal viable product. We also have our discussions now for the white label solutions. And as I said in the beginning, we're combining the benefits of the internet together with ownership protection, verifiability, confidentiality, and on-demand grouping. Think about it. You can use that really this technology for really other areas like healthcare, healthcare where you can exchange treatment protocol, finance where you can do, for instance, M&A processes, deal management. And here we start our initial, uh, initial discussions, but we are focused currently on open innovation to get this platform off the ground. And for the investors, it would be great if you guys join and if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Perfect, thank you for your pitch, Holger. Yeah, then thanks for your patience with my slides here. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. Then let's uh, jump right into the Q and A session. Uh, yeah, from Dream members, do, do any? Do you have any questions so far? Um, yes, I have one. Um, <clears throat> so, can you tell me? Uh, I mean, obviously the market is huge. Can you tell me what? specific next sector or niche you you have chosen to to do your rollout uh, and start out initially yes the initial rollout is really this open innovation actions so we're mm -hmm. reaching out uh, the initial open innovation uh, challenge we are doing is for the pharma industry these guys are inviting uh, 50 or more biotech companies onto the platform Mm -hmm. and they're performing really on the platform the full open innovation action. We have a special open innovation flow. They simply create your challenge. You can secure your challenge. Everybody else can paste in their, uh, their ideas or their, uh, their proposals. They're getting protected at the same point in time. People can close NDAs in between. And the area is life science, uh, especially pharmaceuticals, because they, do not, they are not hit by the cyclicals, uh, by, the, by the cycle currently. So the corona cycle really created some issues, I would say, on the chemistry side. So we're seeing more discussions there, but the discussions on the pharma side are more easy. And the white label side, we are focusing or we have discussions there because we are simply getting approached to use the platform for deal making in the investment management area, which is not a focus for the launch. It is rather a side project where these people really have to finance also uh, the site. And maybe a brief follow-up question. So it, in the part of the process of deal making, so what is, so if I understand right, your, your focus is mainly on making sure that all the IP is protected, right? That's, I guess, where the name comes from. It's intellectual property protection. Again, you can't, you can't really protect, uh, if you share data, you can't mm -hmm. really protect intellectual property. Some stuff you can't write a patent on. 
That's the strength. It's the fingerprint on the one hand side. The second strength is you can really create on the uh, you really doing some kind of legal document while you're exchanging your information because it's a blockchain ready NDA and you're working in closed and private groups. So nobody else is seeing the group if you don't want to. So you can really work in a protected environment. So for instance, a consortium in the automotive industry, you do want have 20 partners joining, but nobody else. So you simply create that on the fly. On top of that, you're creating a link. This link can be shared via LinkedIn, for instance. Therefore, you can attract other people on the platform. And these people are really coming then into your challenge because the people are getting featured on the right and left side exactly with their challenge so that they really find um, why they why are they on our platform. Yeah. We have two questions for the audience. So maybe I will just um, quickly put them in. Um, so first question is how long did you get to, um, how long did it take you to get your first MVP? And maybe second follow up, um, what blockchain did you use for your MVP? Um, we needed, uh, as I said, 18 months. So we needed uh, six months, first of all, for designing what we want to do. And we needed about 12 months to create the full MVP. Um, to, to we started programming uh, 12 months ago. Uh, we had some, I don't know, slowdowns in between, but it's about 12 months. Um, we are using Ethereum blockchain. We are running a parallel with Ethereum. So uh, we are running our own private blockchain, but we are throwing our hashes in parallel into the Ethereum side. Yeah. And then the point is we are running uh, the protocol as GDPR compliant. So that's important with our blockchain. So no, we, as if we exchange information, we both can verify the information, but nobody else can verify. Okay, thank you. Um, we have around a minute left. Um, so maybe Sven or David, is there, is there a question from your side? Uh, yeah, I want to have a question. So from the regulatory side, for me, it's crucial that the court um, yeah, takes my blockchain proof, or my identity, uh, my, sorry, my idea at the blockchain, um, that it's reliable at the court or at the patent office. So how does it look there from the regulatory side? Well, NDA is highly precise because uh, the, the fallback or the drawback of many NDAs is they are not precise because they're describing a project A, project B. The European Commission requires that you have a really precise um, fingerprint and the hash is a precise fingerprint. We are doing a double fingerprint, so it's even more precise. Uh, so therefore, it's, uh, it's highly, uh, I think it's enforceable. On top of that, we have for real contracts, so really, really strong contracts. We have a digital ID management on the site. So we are working there with another company. Um, and therefore, these people can even request that as a request. We have a discussion with the Fraunhofer Institute. They want that people do uh, really a video ident with their ID card. And that's what we are providing on the side, but wire uh, providers as well. Yeah. All right, thank you. Then time's up uh, for this Q&A. Then thanks a lot for your time, Holger. Thank you. Um, then I would suggest we go over to the second startup for today, which is Simon from Dikas. Very nice. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, works well. Okay. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here today and to represent the Dikos Network Team page. We are FinTech um, based former in Frankfurt. Now we just moved to Berlin. And my name is Simon Peters and I'm the managing director of Dikos. And if you'd like to stay in contact with me, <clears throat> I invite you to add me on LinkedIn so you can see what happens with us and with Dikos over the next months and coming years. And what do we do at Dikus? We open the door for asset managers to an uncensored and uncorrelated new asset class. And those of you who know, will know that I'm talking about Bitcoin here, um, mainly because every time we get approached from clients, clients want to talk about Bitcoin. However, our vision is much, much bigger than just the Bitcoin. We believe that by um, 2035, almost all assets, so 22 uh, trillion uh, euros worth of assets will be tokenized for mainly three reasons. It's much more efficient to transfer value uh, in form of tokens. You don't need notary, you don't need any third parties. You have a you have one um, trustworthy system. We'll have smart contracts that are coming up um, and combined with the Internet of Things, we'll soon see complex supply chains trading with each other. And you see that the light goes off here. Sorry. Um, okay, I don't know. 
So uh, more soon for complex supply chains and even our um, own home supplies trading with each other. And in this new world, we, Decos, want to be the custody interface for asset managers. And what do we mean by this? If you're an institutional investor and you want to get into the crypto space or in the blockchain world, you have to have two, two sides. You have to have one side that deals with custody. There are over 100 different custodians out there. So when we talk about custody, we mean a third party that um, keeps your assets safe professionally where you outsource the risk of losing the assets. And right now the custody market is very complex. So you have a lot of different technologies out there. You have hot storage, cold storage, uh, multi-party computing and it never stops. And on the other side, you have uh, over 500 different crypto exchanges. All of them offer you uh, partly different prices. So there's arbitrage. So prices might differ from one exchange to the other. Um, also, um, there are different levels of liquidity, which becomes relevant if you, if you make big orders, because it might happen that you, by positioning a large order, changes the price, change the price on one um, exchange, which you probably don't want to do because I won't be not in your favor. And this is where we come in. So we at Decos solve exactly that problem. On one side, you can plug in all custody infrastructure that you have as an asset manager on a micro level. This means you use our Decos network. Um, you have an, a client that approaches you and has no custody infrastructure, you can open from the wallet. You have another client who already has an infrastructure, take his keys, plug them in uh, and go and run. Or you have a third case where you have a client who wants to, have, wants to use different standards of custody for security reasons maybe. Let's say he wants to have certain assets in cold storage, super secure, and other assets quickly traded on, on hot storage. Also this is possible, so you can plug in for one client more than one um, custody solution. And you have it then in one aggregated view where you can see all the different um, clients with all the different asset classes. And on the other end, in cooperation with Bloxus Capital, we have a crypto exchange. So you, you can trade out of the custody straight across more than one exchange. So by this, you can utilize actually the different prices and um, the different liquidity levels to, to, to an optimum. So this is what we do on a micro level. You as an asset manager, this is what you get. On a, on a macro level, we do a little bit more because we are clearing a settlement layer. This means um, we we'll help you to find execution for OTC trades, for example. So we guide you in closing contract. Uh, we do the clearing. So you want to sell uh, a certain amount of, of assets. We confirm, okay, you actually have these assets in your custody so that you can actually sell them. And we do the settlement. So we can either settle uh, your trade with another custodian or we can um, settle your trade with, for example, a bank that gave you credit to execute um, this trade or bring it on the on the exchange to be settled there and yeah to just to show a little bit of our interface it's not everything is not ready yet um, but you have this one access point where you have all your clients listed with all the assets uh, and you can see the overall performance of your entire fund or an entire family office um, also um, you can look into one into a single wallet and see okay what is what does the portfolio consist of okay what are what is in there um, what is the allocation of the portfolio? What we're working on right now, which is quite a challenge, but super interesting, is to customize, uh, to create customizable roles. So, the, what, however your organization looks from within, let's say uh, only directors allowed to make certain trades for a client above half a million uh, euros worth of assets, that you can build this seamlessly in your interface and, and distribute these roles and authorities. And yeah, this is just quickly our team. So it's me. We have a very, very smart. Um, CTO and I'm very happy to have Proxys Capital on my side as our investor and, and guiding person. And if you think that anything's relevant of that, what I just told you, if you're interested in, in professional investing in, in crypto space and uh, professionalizing the space, I'm very happy if you add me on LinkedIn so we can stay in contact and um, happy to take questions. Perfect. Thank you, Simon. Any questions from the jury so far? Yeah, just one question on my end and thank you for the presentation your target segment within family offices what is your customer acquisition strategy around that given they're often quite stuck to their traditional wealth managers uh, this is an excellent question um so you might also what i actually hear in your question is why do you go for family offices aren't there other customers that, that are better or easier to acquire than the family offices um yes family offices are pretty pretty tough market um we talk about very close circles what we do is um we have a different approach, so we do what everybody does. We try to get out and bring the word out, try to do some inbound marketing. But we do work with some insiders, so we try to go on a very personal interaction level um, through contact people uh, and to reach out to them. And our, and our reason is why what, what we're trying to, to make them understand is 
um, make your legacy uncheckable. You know, there, there are some attributes for the Bitcoin that are very interesting for family offices. For example, that no one, not even the government can take it away from you. Or um, that you, on long term, when you put your legacy on, a, on the blockchain, that you can have smart contracts that work generational, crossing generation and can enforce, for, for example, the family patriarch to set rules what happens or not happens with um, his property and his assets even after he died. And these are ideas that we found if you, if you ever have a family officer that is willing to talk about these things, they, they really like that. So this is something that, that is really on the heart and this is what we're trying to solve. This is answering your question. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, cool. Any questions for you, Lucas or Sven? Where, where do you stand in terms of uh, developing the platform? I understand you have some, some running version already. We so um, we work on something, but we are we are not as far as we would like to be um, for quite some reason. So we, we talk to clients, which is that's been our biggest focus because uh, behind us is block size capital. This means, for example, our trading side is completely ready. Um, we're working right now to to have with one of the custodians that um, that that was on my slide um, that, that we have this functioning prototype ready. Uh, for a single custodian within uh, the next three to four months. Um, yeah, this is our time tab right now. Um, it's incredibly hard to, to get the right, uh, the right engineers. So this is, this is literally our biggest bottleneck and I think every single Kickstarter will tell you this here. Um, but otherwise it's great, like customer-wise we get amazing feedback. Um, we definitely have to put a pull on that. And I hope that uh, the, the first M MVP um, quote unquote is ready yeah, in three to four months. That is workable and can be deployed at customer. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Sven, any questions from your side? Okay, perfect. Then, um, yeah, cool. Then I would say, I think we're through with the questions. Um, thanks a lot for your pitch, Simon. And um, yeah, if you have other questions, uh, especially from the audience side, there, there are no more questions now, but Feel free to contact them otherwise directly. Um, cool, then let's hand over to the next one, um, which is Laya from um, the GK8. Um, can you hear us, Laya? Yes, I can Perfect. hear you. Hi. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Um, can, can you just stop the share screen so I can share mine? Yeah, only a second. Um, it's, um, sorry, my software is bugging around right now. There we go. Some reason not working. Um, Jan, are, are you there? Can you stop Simon's? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. All right, awesome. Can you see my screen? Yes, can see it. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so uh, my name is Leo and I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, GK8. Uh, GK8 is a cybersecurity company that focuses on blockchain technology. Um, I personally earned my stripes in one of the toughest neighborhoods in the world for cybersecurity, in the Israeli Prime Minister's office. I was part of an elite team that protected the strategic assets of the country from cybersecurity attacks. Uh, our intro to the blockchain space was very interesting. As three years ago, uh, we encountered for the first time in a solution that's supposed to be the most secure in the market, an hardware wallet. When we saw it work, we couldn't understand why people think it's so secure, as we saw some kind of uh, Time drive that connected bidirectionally to computer that connected to the internet. So we actually managed to hack it in four days since we first saw how it work. And what we realized was that there are not cold storages in the market, as any of them is connected to the internet at some point. So we tried to understand if could it be optional to make a fully operational way to communicate with the blockchain uh, without a need for internet connection. Um, I think we're a bit more, more uh, mature than, than the company here as we already post a seed round of $4 million, which we did uh, 18 months ago. Uh, we are running our round A now. Um, the lead investor from the previous round was the founder of Checkpoint, one of the biggest cybersecurity companies in the world, the guy that invented the firewall. Um, eventually, what we see is that the economic wealth is becoming digitalized and the existing uh, traditional assets are becoming digitalized. So it's not longer only the cryptocurrency space of uh, hundreds of billions, but as time go on, um, the hundreds of trillions of the traditional assets uh, becoming digitalized and more and more based on uh, blockchain, whether if it's uh, securities, real estate, stocks, and more. 
Now, the main problem that we see is that billions of dollars were stolen the past years. In 2018, it was 1 billion, 2019, more than 4.6 billion. And this problem is supposed to grow as time goes on and more and more traditional institutions are getting into this market and hackers are becoming more and more incentivized to compromise such environments. Now, the core tech challenge that we see is that blockchain is interactive protocol that requires bi-directional connectivity anytime when you want to create a transaction. It means that anytime when you want to create a transaction, there are some data that you need to take from the blockchain. And that's why you need to request it from the blockchain. And then you get it as some kind of uh, raw input, which potentially can include malicious code. And only then you will be able to create a fully signed transaction and send it. It means that anytime when you want to create a transaction, you need to do bi-directional connectivity, which expose any existing solution, whether if it's a cold wallet out there, which we claim that there is no real cold wallet out there, as it needs to use this bi-directional connectivity uh, to cyber attack vectors. Now, as blockchain is irreversible protocols, hackers are clearly take advantage of this attack vector of getting input directly from the blockchain, directly from the internet, in order to compromise such systems. Um, so this is a huge problem which which supposed to grow as we go on. Um, now, unlike this core tech challenge, what we see uh, in our solution is that we know how to avoid requesting this information from the blockchain, and then we don't get any input. It's our patented technology, we have already seven patents um, uh, 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 submitted to the USPTO, is that we know how to create this information by ourselves internally. So the only thing that we do is only use outbound unidirectional communication to send already signed transaction. So there is no any way to compromise our system as there is no any potential attack vector. While the second part of our approach is how we built the rest of the cryptography protocols around the unidirectional communication in order to achieve all of the necessary functionality without compromising security. Uh, eventually the system looks like that. Um, we manage the majority of the assets in the vault, uh, which is never connected to the internet. And this is why it's so special. No one can make a true air gapped call storage and never get uh, any internet connectivity at any part of uh, uh, creating and sending the transaction. While the second part of the solution is based on multi-party computation, which is supposed to manage a small amount of money, we're wrapping it with API and SDK that can be integrated to any existing business logic uh, of the traditional institutions that are working with us, whether if it's exchanges, um, banks, uh, edge funds, and more. Um, the idea is that the majority is held in the vault, small amount of money managing the MPC for high frequency transactions, and we know how to perfectly make them work together. Um, eventually, we're agnostic to the asset class itself as our innovations are within the cryptography layer, so we can support different kinds of blockchain-based assets. Um, we already have clients that's managing over $1 billion in digital assets. One of our biggest clients is uh, eToro, um, that using our product to manage a large amount of money. Yeah, I think I'm out of time now, uh, but I'm inviting you to join our journey as we bring that much-needed security for this uh, rapidly growing market. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Perfect. Thanks for your pitch. Sure. Yeah, it was just spot on five minutes. <laughs> Very well. Thank you. Then, um, yeah, are there any questions from the jury side? Yeah, from, thank you, Leo. Very good presentation. From, from my end, in terms of a, a, your, your customer acquisition strategies, again, how are you expanding into that? You've made some good traction with some local partners. You mentioned banks, institutions. What's your segment there and how are you expanding beyond your core market in Israel? Um, so eventually, um, I guess I will not get into everything uh, in, in this stage, but uh, we combine, of course, uh, direct sales along with integrators and partners that we have globally. I think that our unique value proposition in the technical aspect, um, along with the unique way that we know how to make the combination between the cold and the MPC to achieve all of the needed functionalities of those traditional institutions, is one of the things that makes uh, um, those traditional institutions, also banks, to choose specifically GK8. Um, so that, that, that's, that's our way to do that. So you're going to, so you're, you're focusing on the financial services segment for the time being and then expand from there. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's in terms of development roadmap, what's, what are your, what are your thoughts in the current future? Are you ever going to do also a, a, a B2C type of version or you always plan to focus on B2B? Um, 
Yeah, so uh, GK8 is focused only on uh, enterprises. Uh, we are not a B2C uh, company, uh, especially not for the short term of the 203 upcoming years. We see that the existing um, enterprise institutions that getting into blockchain and see uh, blockchain as tradable assets that they should use uh, growing significantly, and this is our focus. Okay. Um, Sven, do you have any questions? Okay, perfect. Any other questions from Drew, David, um, Lucas? Okay. I think I'm good for the moment, thanks. Okay, perfect. Then uh, no questions from the audience yet. Oh, wait. Um, can your secure network be insured? Can customers get insurance for blockchain transactions? That's one question yeah. from the audience. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question. One of our major focus was to bring um, the banks and the exchanges that we are working with, with the high capa capability of, capabilities of insurance. I mean, security, of course, is very important, um, but we see that it's not um, all of what the banks needs. There are a set of things around it, including insurance, including meeting different compliance and controls needs. And this is one of the focus that we did. GKA today can provide their clients with insurance of up to $500 million uh, by Aon UK. Um, as much as we know, this is the highest amount of insurance in the market for on-premise solutions uh, like us. We made a lot of efforts in order to convince the needed people uh, how unique and how secure is our solution. So they are willing to provide uh, our clients with such high amount of insurance, specifically if they choose GK to manage their blockchain assets on premise. Understood. Thank you. Then thank you. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Um, sure. Pleasure. Thank you. And I would hand over next to um, Achim from Crypto Captain. Uh, Achim, can you hear us? Yeah, give me a second to share my screen. Yep. Works well. Okay, great. Um, good morning. So we are Crypto Captain. We guide your investment timing in the crypto market with predictive analytics. We map out investment opportunities and warn ahead of bad times. In green, you see a bull market. If you ever wondered when you should invest in, say, Bitcoin, then bull markets is what you're looking for. In red, you can see a bear market in the making. Generally, you would like to avoid a bear market. Now, wouldn't it be great if you knew whether cryptocurrency is about to develop a bull or a bear market? We believe that the cryptocurrency market is strongly driven by investors' mood, which is captured by the media. As soon as the sum of the news start turning positive, we expect a bull market on the horizon. Of course, you can read all these news by yourselves and draw the conclusions on your own. But do you really have the time to go through hundreds and thousands of news every day? To solve this problem, we've developed an AI which automatically analyzes news as soon as they are published. In this example, our AI detects the emergence of a new bull market. You can now see our AI in action. Initially, it predicts a bear market depicted by the red circle. With this information at hand, it protects our members from heavy losses by sending a sell recommendation. Now a bull market is detected and our members receive a buy recommendation. You can see in the curve above how returns add up across all bull markets. Now, if you look at the green line, you will see that our bull market compass would have achieved a total return of 200% in Bitcoin over the last two years. Now, what is unique about Crypto Captain? We guide you through volatile markets and a flood of information. We protect your capital by early detecting bear markets and warning you ahead of time. And we save you time with quality investment signals and by cutting out the noise. Our business model is subscription-based and our service is available worldwide. We offer an entry-level subscription service for free, as well as subscriptions for retail and business customers. 
We are happy that over 60 customers are timing their investments using our service currently. Crypto Captain is part of the FinTech mega trend and the emergence of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The graph shows the number of active Bitcoin users and the number has steadily grown to over 30 million. And we believe that this is just the beginning. To win customers, we are building community on Crypto Captain and central to us is our blog and our social media channels. We also target new customers with online advertisement, as well as promote our service at crypto conferences and meetups. The potential to grow our business is characterized by the type of customers we address. So hodlers are self-directed long-term investors in Bitcoin and about 135,000 of them seek advice from services like ours. Furthermore, given an exemplary budget of 2,000 euros for online advertisement, we can attract around 58 new customers. We expect these customers to generate around 3,500 euros revenue. We are a team of two and we've been working together for more than eight years. My name is Achim and I developed DI as well as our digital services. I have more than 10 years of experience with it. My partner Lubo is responsible for the business development. He studied business administration and during this time he also worked on Crypto Captain. So far we've managed to secure 100,000 euros funding from the Exist Founders Grant. We've launched a bull market compass in beta and we are about to launch our subscription service in the coming weeks. Our next steps are to grow our community and acquire new customers using content marketing and targeted advertisement. We also want to build a strong investment record and for this we are experimenting with short-term strategies. Finally, we want to make it as easy as possible for customers to follow our strategies. For this, we are currently working on an investment bot. To realize our next goals, we are looking to raise 200,000 euros via the startup PW program by our, by our regional government. In this regard, we are looking for a co-investor and we will be happy to welcome you aboard. All right, perfect. Thanks, Achim. Um, yeah, are there any questions from the jury so far? Yeah, I got um, two questions. So first yep. of all, is there any scientific proof that sentiment analysis based on news in the crypto market, in the chaotic crypto market, um, has any proven relevance? And my second question maybe is, um, what are your sources? Is it only news or Twitter as well? And maybe you can give us some more clarification point. Um, yeah, of course, um, there is a scientific proof. Um, um, yeah, our background is, is uh, scientific. Um, we've worked to 10 years in university, uh, working on, on our topic uh, like sentiment analysis and uh, transforming it into, into really good investment strategies. And uh, there is a paper, for example, that analyzes the value um, of Bitcoin Talk, which is a, a famous Bitcoin forum. Um, and it, the founding uh, is that um, that it has uh, quite some predictive value for um, for the Bitcoin uh, price development. Um, yeah, there's there's just uh, one one of the papers. Um, and regarding the sources, um, uh, we are not uh, specific to to just uh, the news. Uh, we also analyze uh, Twitter, of course, uh, forums um, and blogs. Okay. And uh, okay. I also can say that, um, yeah, we focus on high quality sources. So, so all the sources are hand selected. So um, it's not like 100,000 sources. So it's, it's more um, hand selected, curated quality sources that, that we um, analyze. Okay. But are there enough quality sources in the crypto market? I mean, it's very niche, nevertheless. Are. So what are those, the news blocks? Um, well, uh, one of the qualities also is, is Bitcoin talk, um, as I mentioned, 
Um, but this is just um, just one example. Um, I just want to say that uh, we had a look at each of these sources, um, our own, to to see if it um, if it makes sense and if it has is if it has value before we before we added it um, to to our to our sources. All right, um, Lucas um, yes. and David, questions from your side. Yes. So, um, did you um, so far? I understand you have a working version, or at least an MVP. Did you um, do also sort of a model portfolio where you measure uh, the success, and then how does does your algorithm perform so far in that respect? Um, uh, yes, um, we've been analyzing um, sentiment of of, um, of online media. Um, for many years, and we started to, to analyze it for um, for the cryptos two and a half years ago. So we have quite quite some data to um, well to to analyze um, these model portfolios. And um, if you remember one of the slides that I've shown, this is our model portfolio for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we can we can also use it for for other um, cryptocurrencies uh, like Ethereum uh, or Ripple um, or Bitcoin Bitcoin Cash. Um, so, um, but these are um, but these model portfolios were not shown in, in the slides, um, but we have them. Um, and originally, our approach um, is coming from um, well, the stock market and and um, and uh, commodities. So we also have have some uh, portfolios there. Mm -hmm. And and how do you? I guess you source your your uh, uh, information on a global basis. How do you? Yeah, yeah. How do you avoid like local local biases uh, of, of of sentiments? Um, local biases. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we we well, we try to have um, a pretty um, broad basis um, of the sources um, to to avoid biases. And mm -hmm. um, well. Um, some of the issues are um, automatically generated uh, news. So we, we try to sort out these um, um, automatically um, because these, um, these news, um, well, they have uh, a lots of um, similarity uh, when, you, when you automatically generate them. So by measuring similarity, we, we, can, we can sort um, them out. Maybe one last quick question is, uh, in terms of liability, is there any potential risk that if you give an indication and the market goes into the other direction that, that you're liable or uh, you can completely exclude your liability? Um, yeah, well, of course, we have uh, terms of service to also uh, terms of service to, to limit um, the liability. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's uh, the way we go. Okay. All right, um, maybe one more functional question. There's a lot of questions from the audience. I will maybe put in one more functional question. Um, do you think in future also of automatizing transactions like a robot advisor, or is it still like a manual process for, for investors? Did you just give the recommendation and, and investors have to um, execute yeah, you're transactions right. themselves? Yeah, you're right. Uh, currently it's, um, it's manually, so, so our um, customers have to implement the recommendations by themselves. Um, this is mainly um, due to regulatory reasons, um, but of course we also have an internal investment bot that um, that uses uh, our recommendations um, for buying and selling at, at an exchange, um, and we've put it in place um, a couple of months ago, so to um, to build our investment record. Um, but it's uh, currently it's only for for our internal purposes, and um, yeah. Once it is um, successful and uh, we've managed to to work out the re <laughs> the regulatory compliance, um, uh, yeah, we will be able to to publish it um, for a broader audience. Today, um, uh, at Block Rockets Monthly Startup Pitch event, we had some great startups line up here today, and I will try to make this as short and concise as possible. So get, let's get right into it. Azos is a company uh, providing an infrastructure to liberate working capital and bring data transparency to the chemical industry. So our key customers are chemical companies. So let's get to slide two. 
So what does this mean, you might ask? Um, what's the problem? Uh, basically, in the chemical industry today, you have two key problems, which is long payment terms, often up to 100 plus days, and you have a data transparency problem. So the question uh, chemical companies are facing is often you don't even know what is in your, uh, in your silo or what goods you are tracking. So uh, how do you want to even finance that? So as an example, I have a story from one of the biggest chemical companies in the world. You can see uh, they wanted to finance some goods and uh, they are sending their intern here to tap on the silo and check uh, what's in there. Uh, he's like saying, well, one fourth remaining. He doesn't even know what's really in the silo. They try to finance it. The bank says, sorry, we cannot finance it. So long payment terms is a norm in the, in the industry and this problem has been persistently growing over the last few years, adding more and more tied up capital, which companies are not able to use. And every company in the chemical industry is basically facing this problem. So it's very interesting to, for us to solve it. And on top of that, um, the chemical industry has extremely high cost of capital. So they are on average losing nine to, nine, nine to 10 cents on the dollar every year if they leave their capital unused. And you might say, just get a loan. So um, yes, chemical companies are getting loans and they are triple A rated obviously, but uh, in times of Corona, do you really want to like extend your balance sheet and raise another bond? And do you really want to leave all this potential tied up capital locked up. So here comes ASOS in. So ASOS, as I said before, offers an infrastructure. So with infrastructure, we mean a combination of sensors, tracking these goods in silos, the DLT solution, so a blockchain. In that case, we are using Quorum, it's Ethereum based. Uh, also existing SAP connections, which we have connected directly into companies. And this is where these invoices are generated. And with this combination of all these three technologies, so sensors, DLT solution and SAP connections, we can create like a proof of existence. So with this proof, we can go to banks and make it possible to finance these chemical goods. So what market do we serve and who are our, who are our partners? Um, we are partnered with Orbit Logistics, which are basically capturing already one third of the biggest chem com chemical companies in the world. And the market we are serving is a chemical market in Europe, which has a turnover of around 565 billion per annum. And we combine 20 years of experience with them and their sensor infrastructure and ERP connections with our DLT solutions, creating this kind of proof so we can go to bank, banks and finance these assets. And in addition, our business model is a flat fee for implementing this infrastructure. So connecting the silos, connecting the SAP connections and implementing our DLT solution. And we are taking a small fee in the end, a flat fee for implementing and a fee, a small fee for the whole transaction volume. Uh, so to summarize, ASOS provides an infrastructure. We connect these chemical companies, creating a proof. Then we can go to the banks. We can finance these assets. Therefore, we can unlock the tied up capital. And then we take a small fee. And uh, our MVP is already rolled out at one of the biggest chemi chemical companies in the world, top three. And um, yeah, basically that's ASOS. And uh, I hope you guys are excited as I am about ASOS. Um, this has been my first pitch ever, so I hope I made it correctly. And we are currently um, raising capital. We have existing VC offers on the table, but we are still searching for a lead investor. And this is our team. We have a proven re track record and 20 years of experience th through our SME. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs>